Okay, we're live. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the July episode of Wikimedia Technical Talks. Tech Talks are for members of the Wikimedia Technical Community to share their knowledge. Today, we have Zbyszko Paperowski, um, a senior software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation. He'll be... Okay. Oh, you're live now. Oh, shit. Hi, everybody. Welcome Sorry. Welcome to the July episode um, of Wikimedia Technical Talks. Tech Talks are for members of the Wikimedia Technical Community. Sorry, guys. I just got a... Um, I have a second video going at the same time. A senior software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation. He'll be... Oh, you're live now. Oh, shit. Sorry. Guys, sorry. Can we start oh, over? <laughs> uh, we're live right now. I, I okay. can't stop it. But All right, um, I'll get us started. Sorry about that. I had a, um, another feed running at the same time. So I'm going to actually just start the intro over. Um, and then um, if we can cut that when, when we um, post it to YouTube, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll okay. Awesome. So sorry. <laughs> sorry, all. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the July episode of Wikimedia Tech Talks. Um, Tech Talks are for members of the Wikimedia technical community to share their knowledge. Today, we have Zbyszko Paperowski, a senior software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation. He'll be speaking today about Wikidata query service. Um, some quick housekeeping. Um, Zbyszko will give his talk and then we'll open up for questions afterwards. Uh, you can ask on the YouTube live, the YouTube live stream or the Wikimedia Office IRC channel. Um, and uh, yeah, without further ado, I will hand it over to Zbyszko. Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> I have to tell you in the, from the beginning, it's a very interesting experience for me. That's my first talk uh, uh, the, in this manner. So there will be probably some hiccups, but uh, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, my talk today is called Beyond Wikipedia Knowledge That Even a Computer Can Understand. Like Sarah said, it will be focusing quite a bit on uh, Wikidata query service. Uh, I plan to cover a, a range of topics mostly uh, related to development side of, of the solution, but I will also talk a little bit about Wikidata and Wikidata query itself, SparkQL and, and things similar. Even if um, many people of you know those tools already, there will be a surprise at the end, something extremely new uh, that may pique your interest. So let's begin. Uh, well, sorry, that's most of the, my introduction. I will just say that I'm a part of a search platform team. Uh, uh, we're dealing mostly with, as the name suggests, with search across the community projects, but uh, also and currently mostly uh, uh, with maintaining with WDQS, which is a short, of course, for WData, uh, Wikidata query service. But it's also my main focus in the organization. I've been with Wikimedia Foundation for the last seven months, so not, not very long. A uh, little disclaimer here, uh, opinions will be presented here probably, and those opinions are obviously my own. Um, so let's dive straight into it. I want to start with the topic of the semantic web. Basically, uh, it's hard to tell, say anything about Wikidata, Wikidata query service without at least mentioning this, the concept the, uh, of semantic web. Uh, so semantic web was created as in standards was set for semantic web around 2001, but the idea itself was voiced at least a few years later. And the idea was to create a worldwide web of uh, uh, interconnected uh, entities. Basically, add metadata to every page that will describe what the page is about, how it represent the content in digestible by a machine uh, way, have a standard ontology on top of it that would allow, uh, allow knowledge to cross boundaries between all those pages, applications. Uh, and uh, of, of course, the uh, metadata uh, model uh, metadata was to be provided by the author of the page. Uh, there were ma many different formats to describe this. Uh, we'll be mostly talking about one today, one that is most important to us. But uh, let's dive into uh, what the description actually should look like. So this, uh, this is probably something most of you know. Uh, that's a children's rhyme, Mary Had a Lamp. Its face was white as snow. There are like many versions of this one, but uh, mostly boil down to the same thing. 
And exactly, if we want to boil down to the gist of it, what the what is the information presented in this uh, in this uh, children's rank? Uh, we would get something like this. So uh, this is what you see is a gra knowledge graph that uh, can could, can be represented as a metadata in uh, uh, in the case of a semantic web. So basically, information we have are statement like statements like Mary has a lamp. Statements about statements that the lamp is little and its color is white. We also can uh, extract the information about the color of the snow because fleece is white as snow. So uh, we can also save this information uh, describing color of the snow. Obviously, we know the snow can be a different many, many different colors, but that's some that's can be white. Right. Uh, so this, of course, was should be represented not in form of the graph itself, but the statements I mentioned before. We will dive more into this, but let's first try and understand uh, why would we even want to try to do something like that? Because, uh, uh, as you can imagine, uh, having a page that has to be updated not only uh, not only content should be updated, but also uh, also, some form of metadata is a is generally a problem. If uh, for developers out there, that's like uh, comments in the code; they tend to get outdated quite soon. Um, but the goals of the semantic webs uh, are quite maybe not noble, but uh, very interesting. So, first of all, and that's the basis of semantic web is to create an actual worldwide web that is uh, machine readable. Uh, machine readable. Uh, so every single page describes uh, describes uh, its content, its knowledge, in the compatible form with the other every other else. So there are ontologies, which basically in that case mean a set of agreed upon names identifiers that each page would use to describe its content, which would mean that. Uh, and if we get content from the two different pages relating to the same concepts, like I don't cars or uh, animals of some sort, you will be able to connect them together and basically get uh, inf information from both of those and add another one. You get more information, uh, which means basically you could you'll be able to infer much more knowledge than a single page would be able to provide you. Um, obviously, that's a great thing for scientists. Because they can find new knowledge based on this, but uh, but from a perspective of development, it's a fantastic uh, base for AI uh, machine learning uh, uh, machine learning implementations. Uh, working of statistical data, uh, machine learning can uh, get some part of the knowledge. That's uh, some that I will dive a little bit more on this after that, but. Uh, Semantic web can provide a lot of context that uh, may not be uh, may not be obvious from a simple analysis of some text. That's something that is curated by users, so we have a higher chance of this being actually correct. Um, one second. That's uh, there are a few applications of this that I really like, and I will be diving this uh, a little bit later. Uh, another interesting aspect of uh, uh, of um, semantic web itself is that uh, it's basically language agnostic. So if you see we'll, if you see some examples of uh, semantics webs in action, uh, you can of course see some labels in some specific language. In many cases, those labels are translated to a multitude of languages, uh, which means that if you have a graph representation of a node, you can basically provide a uh, flattened view or even like natural sentences that can be uh, given in any, any any given language because the knowledge itself if you have the translation you can provide it provide new knowledge basically on the spot obviously some work is acquired and uh, and that's a huge amount of work to provide them in the human readable form like uh, well uh, comfortable form let's say that uh, but it's still much closer to having a, uh, having a, lang a knowledge that is language agnostic than anything else. Um, there's a, many of you probably know, already know there's a project that, uh, that uh, touches this subject quite a bit. 
Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, those were the whys. Now let's think about how it's being realized in the real life. Uh, so there are many different formats used for uh, for RDA for for uh, semantic web. Uh, not many, but different. We're focusing on RDF, which is a suggested standard by the uh, World Wide Web Consortium. Mm. Uh, we will talk about it because that's what we use basically as a, as our format for Wikidata and structured data and comments. Um, so this is basically a metadata data model. Uh, it uses uh, URIs uh, uh, to as a base for identification. It's so something that we should all be quite familiar with. Uh, RDF uh, is a specification, or rather, after a few recent, well, not recent, but latest change uh, in version number, uh, it's a set of specifications that you can all uh, go and see. Uh, so it doesn't actually describe a format, but there are a few, few different formats used for describing resource description framework. Uh, those uh, that we mostly use are turtle and, and triples format, which I will uh, touch a little bit upon quite soon. Uh, so what you see here is the same graph we had before, but uh, statements are represented as a sort of RDF. It's uh, something that would uh, be translated to RDF. Uh, what we have here is basic, your basic statements that are Basically, triples, uh, subject, predicate, and uh, and um, and object. Uh, that's how we mostly describe this. And we also have uh, things called verified re statements. I'm probably pronouncing this incorrectly, which uh, describe uh, those are statements about statements. We call them qualifiers. They do present some uh, additional knowledge uh, about the about the statement itself. Uh, you can imagine that, for example. If we would to be, to describe some famous person, we would, for example, say that he was or she was educated at uh, uh, St. John's University. Uh, and qualifiers would, for example, tell you that uh, he or she started uh, this year and this date. And another qualifier would tell you that uh, that uh, that uh, this is the end of, of his or her education. Uh, and basically, what the format we use looks more or less like this. That's a, TD, that's a title format. We, uh, what you would basically see is something like this. That's a full a full URI uh, that describes, uh, like I previously mentioned, uh, subject, predicate, and uh, object. But uh, honestly, that would be quite a, quite a handful to write every time. So uh, format introduces something called prefix. You can, for example, state that that WD will be uh, something like this, WDT will be something like this. Uh, what is important here is that um, uh, this is basically a replacement. If you see something like this, this will be replaced by something like this. There is no magic involved here. There is no domain uh, or, or address resolution. Those are URIs. They don't have to actually be connected to any actual physical page. Uh, they can be, though. And in case of Wikidata, they are. Okay, so now we're starting to, to go into the sub most important subject of our of our of the presentation. So RDF uh, basically describes a graph. So each statement, uh, like in the form of this, like this this kind of, uh, is basically an edge in the graph that describes uh, describes a directional edge. So this set of those statements build a graph. Uh, and since it is a graph, it's uh, quite natural that we want to ask questions. Uh, we want to ask questions. So uh, the recommended way of doing that for, for the semantic web uh, is uh, SparkQL. Uh, acronym stands for SparkQL protocol and RDF query language. It was definitely invented when uh, recursive uh, acronyms were a thing. Uh, what it basically does is allows you to uh, allows you to query an RDF datasets. So um, theoretically, all you need is uh, some 
form of RDF, uh, which can be a file. Uh, and uh, there are tools that allow you to use Spark UL on this. Uh, it has a few interesting features that support that uh, uh, that support quer querying the graphs. Um, one of my favorite is paths. So basically, you can ask a path in the graph, which is something that will be very difficult, if, if impossible, to do in the standard SQL uh, queries. Um, it uh, does support uh, other. I'm sorry. And besides this, it also supports uh, quite uh, interesting features you won't find, uh, I wouldn't say anywhere else, but that's not really popular. One of the features is called federation. Federation means that uh, SparkQL allows you to ask another SparkQL endpoint inside of a single query. So for example, you if you have a statistical, uh, statistical uh, SparkQL endpoint somewhere and you have uh, and you want to uh, join this with some other data that uses the same ontology. That's the remember. That's the thing about semantic web. It uses a common ontology. Uh, you can easily use federation to ask a, a ask a subquery inside of your bigger query, uh, but you ask it to a different server. Uh, also, as well as support is it's called uh, service service calls. Service calls uh, look similar to federation, but allow you to enrich the data with some external service. We will have example, quite popular example for this quite quite soon. So Semantic Web was uh, announced about two decades ago and uh, it had very high high hopes of uh, bringing some order to, to chaos and uh, allowing our very, very nice things with the web itself. Uh, so it's 19 years later how how does it look well, not really great i mean in one perspective it's uh, i could say that the semantic web is better than ever but on the and the same time it's the ideas many of the ideas especially the ones i just described are basically non-existent in a general when it comes to a general web uh, uh, so what I mean by this, uh, people, well, it's difficult to keep up with the metadata. It's when you have this, the pages that are, you have to fill it out by yourself manually. Uh, that's the idea of the process uh, to have this done manually. And uh, honestly, the I don't think that incentives for doing that uh, are, are ever reached to general people. Um, which means that uh, there are issues with uh, finding the pages that actually use uh, RDF to describe its, uh, its data with metadata. But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, semantic web is dead. Uh, semantic web currently is probably better than ever and will get even better because uh, front end, I would call it front end part of semantic web, which I mean by this is uh, using a uh, knowledge graph basically that's a very common description uh yeah. and many many kinds of uh, many kinds of achievement uh if, kinds of projects is quite uh, is quite popular nowadays uh the places that don't use uh, the issues with the uh, being up to date with rda descriptions were basically replaced with the uh, ai and machine learning uh projects that, uh, that's, that uh, come through the web and try to understand the, try to understand what pages are about. And it, happened, and it works very well. As so you can try it out, Google, Facebook, even LinkedIn. Uh, they've been using the semantic web or knowledge graph in their case to quite, uh, to quite great success. Uh, there is, there's quite a lot of issues with it though. Uh, first of all, so uh, this way of uh, getting the uh, information from the pages using machine learning uh, is, is is prone to an informational bias. Basically, uh, problem is that uh, unrepresented underrepresented knowledge will not be handled very well because uh, all of the machine learning that others work on some sort of uh, statistical data, which means that uh, knowledge that isn't very well represented will be will be of worse quality. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's, uh, it will never be as the context of those searches will never be as good as uh, something that human could uh, 
could um, could have created our community. Fortunately, we have a way of doing this. Uh, what didn't work in the large context of web can can work in the context of a project that is focused on the on the knowledge itself. Uh, uh, obviously, I talk about Wikidata. I won't go much about into Wikidata uh, other than it is a knowledge graph that's uh, basically uh, for people who don't know the details here. Uh, it kinds of it's a similar thing that I just described. There are a few different additional things here. Uh, additional uh, additional things. Well, basically, additional to, to a general semantic web is our own, own ontology. So we have uh, queue items in Wikidata, we have uh, properties, we have values, we have other queue items. We also have uh, qualifiers, that's what I described before as a sentence about sentence. And we have uh, references. So this is a wiki, wiki project. So uh, we do want to be able to trace to a, a reference just as we would do this with the, with the, uh, with the Wikipedia page. Um, so, as everything else in Wikimedia projects, it's uh, it's edited by a community. Um, uh, it works much better than the original idea in the small context, and also, uh, Wiki community are communities are basically uh, dedicated and share a vision of uh, free knowledge uh, accessible by anyone. So. That's something that's uh, that is perfect uh, perfect uh, place to actually implement the semantic web. Uh, it's eight years old. Uh, it's I believe I heard in January that is the fastest growing uh, Wikimedia project right now, um, and uh, it can help with some of the of the issues of the uh, of the automatic camping, the machine learning algorithms. Uh, it won't help everything. So uh, when using Wikidata, remember that there are things that can that can be biased there also, like in, in any kind of a community-driven approach with editors, so, uh, volunteer editors. So in most cases, uh, the best example is that Wikidata is, for example, not a very good place of researching things like what's the most popular, what's the most common ca cause of death, for example. Uh, starvation won't be very high there because uh, people who are notable, and that's the same condition as it applies in Wikipedia, only notable people can, can appear in Wikidata. There will never be a database of all, every, every people in Wikidata. Uh, and those people generally not come from the fungus stricken communities. So this is not a very good way of representing a statistical knowledge, but uh, contextual knowledge works much better with this. Um, of course, like in every other community-driven editor, uh, volunteer editor-based uh, uh, project, there are some uh, biases based on the of the distribution of uh, of editors. Uh, this is something Wikimedia quite uh, involves uh, involves quite a bit, and uh, and community also has uh, many projects that uh, try to address the underrepresentation of uh, of some knowledge. Uh, that's editors are not the only, at least not directly only, <laughs> beings editing the Wikidata. Quite a lot of it is also edited by by bots right now. Uh, there are different things. Uh, some of them are used to uh, update the data based on some statistical knowledge available in different other databases. Uh, another example would be filling the graph, uh, like adding the reverse links, uh, which uh, also is being done by bots. Uh, bots are, of course, maintained maintained by, by community. Uh, we do expose some uh, some resources that can help with uh, maintaining one. Those are, but yeah, th those are uh, pretty much community uh, community that. And it's mostly separate from Wikipedia. Uh, by me being saying mostly, I mean there are a few things that overlap. There are places that also use bots for uh, from from Wikidata to Wikipedia. Uh, quite directly, we do have site links to, from Q items. Q items represent the items entities in Wikidata to pages in Wikidata. Uh, I won't go into details. There's a fantastic talk 
on them that tells um, more about wiki data itself its ideology and so on um, i would uh, there will be links at the end i recommend everybody to check them out and some of i guess they will quite much expand your knowledge on, this, on the subject okay so uh, this is the fun part because i'm going to uh, <laughs> do some demonstrations and uh, i just had to replay change the operating system three minutes before this presentation so there's bound to be things that will fail um let's see okay so let's uh, the idea is to present some queries uh, not much of them i want to show some fun uh, fun aspects of uh, wikidata, wikidata query service and spark ul that uh, we provide uh, in, in our service. Uh, those were definitely were not exhaustive and uh, I highly recommend if you find this interesting. Uh, also see links on the end of my presentation and uh, try them out yourselves. Additionally, there will there are some examples. Okay, so first question I will ask the Wikidata query service when was Isaac asking the worm? Uh, now I know this looks scary, so let's uh, let's see uh, how it looks like in the actual service. I'm I hope that everybody sees this the the service itself. So let's input the query and let's talk about what we see here. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's start for now with something basic let's start with a very basic query so as you can see uh sorry uh this is uh this is uh, quite uh similar to to uh, general like sql languages uh but it does have a thing of its own right now i will do something that is basically a get all query uh, with some limit uh, I hope I did it correctly. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about what Wikidata query service actually is. is. So what you see here is a Wikidata query service uh, uh, GUI. Uh, it connects to a backend service that is uh, that I will talk a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, I had a Polish language. Let's switch it to something more universal. universal. Um, so quite a few fun things are the if you want to see what prefixes are used you can browse them here uh, if you select something we'll put one here it's not necessary you can use wd and other uh, prefixes without this but if you really would like want to see them you can you can do that um, another fun another uh, fun part of the wikidata query service GUI is our examples those are the great ways of uh, exploring the service itself uh, examples as as everybody everything else is com is community yeah. community driven so um, uh, so uh, I recommend highly to to see things like this as I see it still translates things to my my language so sorry for that um, so um, I recommend going through examples they will show things much better than I will here uh, uh, and what you also can see is of course play button and here are the results um, okay so let's see what was the thing about uh, about uh, the date of birth uh, of Isaac Asimov let's let me copy this one again so let's uh, generally uh, if I would ask uh, some of somebody's uh, date of birth i will do something like this uh, wd is the prefix for general wikidata items there's a auto complete here because identifiers can be quite unwieldy uh, it doesn't matter if you inside inside of the computer program is probably not that important but in case of the query itself it, it's useful to actually see something so let's find us in here uh, sorry for that um, here we go. Uh, this is a demo. I do this on different system, so something will break. Date. Birth. 
Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Yes, we found something. So uh, as you can see, this query shows um, uh, his date of birth to be January, 1st January uh, 19, uh, 1920. Uh, but this also is something that is not immediately uh, visible here. There are qualifiers to this information. Let's see Isaac Asimov on the on the uh, on the actual page. Let's copy his ID. So here is the Wikidata uh, page. Of on the Isaac Asimov. So uh, what you see here are all those statements that uh, we can use in the Wikidata query. Uh, the interesting part I'm, uh, I wanted to show is uh, this one. So if we ask directly for the date of birth, we got what we thought we could get. It's, at, uh, it's the 1st of January because that's a, basically a year. So it's translated to the first day of uh, this year. But <laughs> Actually, uh, nobody knows when Asimov was born. He would never, never actually did admit when uh, when was that. So um, he did actually. I think uh, he did uh, uh, celebrate his birthday on second of January, but it's not really. It's not really sure when he was actually born. Born. So the query I presented does a thing differently. So let's see this query. My query will look like this. Uh, we will use different uh, different prefixes. This will be a prefix that will allow us to get into qualifiers, basically. This is the same property we have here, but uh, it's uh, it will allow us to get qualifiers. And qualifiers, the information about information, we get by using the PQ, PQ uh, uh, prefixes. So if I delete this, I'm actually able to see both earliest and latest date of his birth. So, okay, that's uh, that's uh, in, that's something. Let's go further. Let's. I want to show also. Oh, sorry, probably. Uh, so the graph features of the WDQS. Uh, we want to see all the descendants of Elizabeth Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. Queries looks quite simple. I will explain it in a second. Probably have to change a bit here. Zabishko, I can I interrupt you really yeah. quickly? Can you increase yeah, sure. your, can you increase your screen size just perfect? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> now folks on the on the YouTube screen can see it a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> That's something I had set up before. <laughs> because I'm running system. I will uh, that was okay. So let's see. Uh, first of all, let's run the query, so we'll see what I'm not relying. Um, and let's explain a few new things that happened here. Um, first of all, I again created some variable in the query itself, but I didn't use it here. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, but interesting part is here, here is this. P40, as you can see, yeah, here we go, is a... Uh, Sort of a parent uh, type relation from child to a to a to a to a I forget the word like mother parent or grandparent and so on. Uh, plus is a fun one here. Uh, plus basically means that uh, if we have a path between uh, this item, this item is obviously Elizabeth II, and to this item, there should be, we only expect those kinds of relations in, in between. And at least at least one of those. We can do much more with this. We can do uh, ORs on this path. Um, I won't dive into this here, but there's a link that describes this in the end of my presentation. But like I said, there's something different about this. So uh, this is an example of a service call I was I mentioned before. Um, but this service call allows you to label the data that uh, is provided here. So if there's an if this is an entity. And for example, this is an entity. You have uh, information uh, here that uh, tells you what is the actual label of this uh, entity. And it can be presented in different languages. Uh, as you can see, in Polish, it's Elżbieta uh, Druga, in English, Elizabeth II. So uh, those kinds of labels can be 
uh, can be presented here. You can enrich your data with those labels. Uh, if I do something like that, um, it's still here. Uh, it's still here, but I get something additional. Okay, let's go. We, uh, I see that I spent here a little more, more time than I wanted. So let's skip this one. Uh, this is also an interesting one. Uh, you can combine the, the, you can create path on your own. For example, if you want to know, and that's like a small recommendation engine for you, it's basically uh, what are the uh, bands and projects of different members of Nightwish. So this is the query. Let's execute this instead of just showing you. Okay, here we go. And what you can see here is that uh, I found the relationship member of uh, band I am interested in Nightwish. So this will basically return to me every single uh, member of, uh, of Nightwish. And once I do this again, I could probe this with the, the, the differently, but uh, the same way I will get all the bands. Right now I will also get the band Nightwish, but we can exclude this. Uh, maybe I'll show that hyperlink. So. Here you have a list of my bands. Like I said, you also get Nightwish. The fun part of here is we can also group by those bands. Uh, you can you may be wondering why this uh, sub uh, setup here is because uh, unfortunately you cannot uh, really group by the and which data come from a service. So you first have to get a list of the queue items, and once you have that, you can again apply service wiki, uh, service uh, called label and apply the labels. Uh, okay. Uh, the late, uh, the last one query I will show will sh uh, is about uh, seeing what uh, Wikidata considers a planet. Uh, and this one will be important later on. So uh, this one is, uh, describes the uh, describes which uh, we're talking about the solar system. Basically, part astronomical body is the sun. Ah, oh, by the way, dots are because uh, every sentence should end with a dot. So statements do. And uh, we are interested uh, in uh, those kinds of instances. And instances are inner planets and outer planets of our solar system. We could drop this, but this makes it uh, easier to query this because we limit the number of data. And we, of course, can uh, language this. Uh, Outer language is probably bad because this operating system is in Polish. So, uh, and as you can see, that's the list of planets. Uh, unfortunately, Pluto didn't get the attention it rightly deserves. Uh, okay, so what could be the application become academic? Uh, academic, which are we, we already touched upon. Uh, I can easily see, and there are some examples of uh, knowledge-based apps that, uh, that would allow you, for example, to see some, uh, some to show some museum uh, items or some paintings and so on based on Wikidata. Uh, there are instances of science uh, data from Wikidata used, for example, for ca different calculators to uh, do some transformations. But the most uh, interesting for me example is a, comp is a search. And that's something that Google uses, that's something that uh, Facebook uses, and so on. Uh, it allows you to provide a more context to your searches, uh, allows you to write queries to match a broader subject. If you can uh, pinpoint which item or which entity represents the query itself, you can provide a based on knowledge graph, provide something that's, uh, that's, uh, that represents a broader subject. Uh, quite interesting case mentioned recently on our office hours was uh, diversity search. For example, uh, Amazon, if you search for Amazon, you will find an Amazon page, but you can also add different other entities that uh, uh, fit the Amazon world, like the, you know, the river, for example. Um, also could help with the query understanding. Those are not only entities in Wikidata, but also Wikidata uh, provides mm -hmm. statements mm -hmm. itself and statements in general uh, can be uh, trans. Uh, you, you could try to match your searches to sentences, uh, to some statements, which would give you a huge boost from the perspective of potential results, and obviously the relevancy of their of them. 
So let's talk a little bit. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I will probably get to this very quick. Uh, what's from the developer's perspective? And uh, specifically, how, what, how does the WDQS with data query service look like under the hood? Uh, so this is our repo. It's a mirror of our uh, Garrett repo, but I learned that presenting Garrett uh, when we first met meet is uh, something that people don't usually do. But there's a GitHub mirror that you can easy uh, easy clone. Uh, some the schema of our <laughs> let's call it architecture is quite simple. We listen to recent changes. Uh, we can also ingest uh, RDF dumps. Uh, Wikidata provides RDF dumps. And there's a two-step process uh, that uh, contains of manager and updater. Updater basically communicates with BlazeGraph. BlazeGraph is a query, uh, is, a, is our database, uh, well, graph database that allows us to query uh, with using SparkQL. And GUI parts you already saw. It's something that uh, BlazeGraph is communicating, well, GUI is communicating with, with BlazeGraph. So uh, the manager may sound a little strange, but uh, we do not uh, use the data from RDFs provided with data directly. There are a few reasons for this. First of all, WDQS was designed as a service that anybody can use on any different RDF set. So there's, uh, we don't have to use our uh, Wikidata. Uh, at least that's the idea. But we want to be able to validate that the, that the, item, that the statements provided are, are valid. Uh, we do some cleaning up uh, of the data. We uh, remove duplicated items, like there are labels that come from, from in three different varieties that mean exactly the same. Uh, we remove some unnecessary data, like types or size. Uh, we allow, we do not use that, that, that specifically, but we allow data filtering. So if you want, you can filter out only the data you're interested in. And we uh, tr do a slight transformation when it comes to few, some data to make it well, basically, uh, uh, more compatible with the queries itself. Uh, so that's what Manjit does. It does it on all the sets based on the specific queries, uh, uh, queue items uh, that are in subject. Then is the updater. Updater uh, is, as the name would suggest, something that updates the blaze graph entries. Uh, each update is basically a few different update queries that, uh, first of all, for example, remove some stale uh, entries update actual statements, update statements about statements, uh, update references, so on. Uh, we use BlazeGraph to reconcile the differences. Uh, this approach has been a little bit problematic and is uh, something we are working uh, on actually replacing. We are currently working on this thing we call streaming updater that will uh, uh, reconcile the difference outside of BlazeGraph. Uh, so it will help with this will scalability and also allow us to uh, potentially think about having different databases in BlazeGraph. We quite depend on what BlazeGraph does for right now. So what I'm talking about this, that, that's because uh, offshore query service is quite limited when it comes to timeouts, when it comes to uh, throttling and so on. It's a service that everybody basically accesses our database. So idea is that if you want to try it out, if you want to do it offline, for example, uh, use it offline, like to enrich some uh, some search parameters, but uh, but use it uh, in some of on your in your workflow, then that you can probably use querywikidata.org. But if you want to, but it's quite easy to just set it up on your, by yourself. It's, uh, all the data that we use are public ones, uh, so it's. You can just set it up on your own uh, infrastructure in somewhere, and you could use this uh, quite easily. Uh, from the basic point of view, there are a few scripts that can help you. Once you download the, the download the repo, there's a run BlazeGraph script with a bunch of parameters you probably won't have to use for the first time. Uh, you have to have uh, run BlazeGraph running uh, in the beginning. A munch is uh, Munch requires some points. You have to provide the path to uh, to a dump. Uh, basically, this is a way of setting up for the first time your Wikidata query service instance. And then you can have use a script called load data that will allow you to uh, load the Munch data inside of your uh, into your own Wiki WDQS instance. Uh, beware! Right now, it probably takes like like a week. But that's the first time you have to do this. 
uh, on your continuous run, you would use, uh, again, Blaze Graph, obviously, but you can use uh, updater just like we do, uh, basically updating from a certain point in time, all the changes will be downloaded, you used, uh, and you can use them, uh, use uh, Blaze Graph normally. Um, I haven't mentioned how to set up uh, GUI, but there's a Docker. Uh, there will be a link to a, to a, to a, a blog post that describes this, um, how to set it up. Also, we'll provide the more detailed information on the on the commands I just provided. Uh, I also recommend to watch the, the blog itself because uh, Atro is uh, heavy in, at work uh, trying to provide you with the better options for data ingest. Basically, idea is to have something that will allow you very quickly to bootstrap uh, your WDQS instance without actually uh, doing the whole process of that dating by yourself. Um, when it comes to using uh, core uh, WDQS, this is the endpoint you should definitely remember. It's quite common that if you have some service that has RDF data, it will provide slash Spark QL endpoint. Um, you can do access this program actively. Uh, I myself uh, am a Java developer mostly, so I use the Apache Jenna RQ for this. Uh, Jenna is a whole suite around RDF. It allows you to create uh, in-memory databases or even uh, like a one so you probably you could uh, expose. And it also provides you the tooling that allows you to query both local RDF uh, stores and remote ones like WDQS. Uh, I know that some few people use and quite often use Python. RDF lib is quite a popular library that allows you to do the same thing. And uh, I would always recommend for anybody of you to contribute. Wiki, Wikidata query service isn't as popular as MediaWiki, for example, so we do not get much many uh, sorry many contributors, and we would very much like to cooperate to cooperate with with uh, people from outside. Uh, so if you feel, are feeling up to it, uh, this is a fabricator board. Uh, we would very much like to work with you. So what are the next steps? The first thing that is uh, going to be announced like probably quite soon is Wikimedia Commons Core Service. Uh, I mentioned that Wikidata uses RDF, but actually uh, underneath Wikidata is uh, Wikibase. It's a general API that also structured data on commons uses. If you've been to the Comex talk, you know where it is, but uh, in the short description, that's the that's something that allows you to uh, query the, uh, to have some structured information about the uh, media inside of the Wikimedia Commons. So pictures, uh, video, audio, described in the digestible manner using also parameters from, uh, using uh, ontology from Wikidata. So a quick, Quick example on this. Um, I probably shouldn't uh, show the world bar, but we'll soon, soon be doing this. So let's go with this. Uh, WCQS is a little bit different from the uh, Wikidata query service. It uh, is behind the Wikimedia Commons login. So you have to, uh, one second, there you go. Uh, you have to uh, log in to access this, but there are no restrictions right now. We did it to limit uh, uh, some spam, some uh, bots that uh, query too, way too often. So let's do a quick example. Uh, here we go. So this the, this is the query that uses federation, by the way. This is the federated query. Uh, since uh, Wikimedia Commons only has a content about about the media, we do actually need some more data to find out something interesting. So you may recognize this query. It's uh, basically the same query we had before about the planets. And uh, WD, uh, okay, so again, wrong language. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, WDT uh, means the text. So basically that's a very common uh, property in uh, Wikimedia Commons, which basically means that something is on this picture. I needed to limit a bit the number of pictures because uh, it's not yet indexed. So I limited it to celestial bodies. And here is the exact query we had before. Actually, we don't need that here, uh, which basically selects all the planets. And here I can get the entries on Wikimedia Commons that uh, show this planet, I hope. Yeah, for example, that's Jupiter. 
and we should see some plants here too. Yeah, that's Eric. So uh, that's the core example I imagine that will be used quite a lot as mean, I mean the way of doing this, federate uh, things to uh, Wikidata and actually Wikidata query service and get the information that will be enriched with the Wikidata Commons query service. Uh, it should be launching today. I hope that nothing changed in the last 15 minutes. Um, and there will be an announcement on this. This is beta, so this is quite limited, uh, but I hope uh, that will bring some additional value. We, uh, this is definitely still a work in progress. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm nearing the end. So, uh, obviously something that many of you probably already heard, uh, Wikimedia Foundation launched a new project uh, called Abstract Wikipedia uh, Wikilampe, if you will. I think Abstract Wikipedia is currently uh, uh, currently uh, uh, official name. The project is launched by Denny, who is uh, also creator of Wikidata, uh, and it will be based on Wikidata. It's uh, when I describe the language agnostic approach to creating new content. That's basically what abstract Wikipedia is some has to do. It sounds uh, it's a very very simple sentence for something that is extremely complicated, and not, but I hope we'll see very nice things coming from this. Uh, like promised, as I promised, uh, here's a bunch of links that uh, you may find useful. Uh, RDF format description, uh, link to uh, Astro's blog. This one particular just describes the uh, the setting up uh, guide. This is a guide to setting up Docker. Uh, instance of WTQS, how to load the data and so on. I would recommend to, to see all of this blog. It has many interesting articles about the WTQS. Other things, the assets guide to SparkQL is a roughly two hours introduction to uh, SparkQL. Quite, it's very good. Uh, if you're not like a visual person, you can go with uh, our own official Wikidata SparkQL tutorial. And I mentioned before talks uh, about Wikidata concepts uh, from Denix. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping that some of this uh, uh, sparked your interest in using WQS in your applications or uh, contribute, maybe even contributing to, to the stuff we do. Um, uh, so thank you very much. Sarah, I'm done. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and open up for questions. Um, there is a definite lag between um, our Zoom video that we're recording right now and the YouTube stream. So um, mm -hmm. for folks on the YouTube stream, it might be a little bit um, behind before, um, it might take a little bit for your question to get answered. Um, I don't see too many. I'm gonna talk for just a minute uh, and see if a couple come up. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the resources that you have in um, in your talk that you did. Uh, will you share with um, with us the slides, and then I will post. Yeah. Them to you, um, that was that was always the idea. Yeah. Awesome. Great. And then so then and then I'll also share those links out on our YouTube stream so that folks can um, mm -hmm. just access stuff from that stream as well if they come and and watch this later. Um, yeah. Super interesting. Um, okay, I'm looking at our questions right now. Um, I'm not seeing anything in IRC. We did have one question come through on um, the feed, on the YouTube stream, and um, uh, it was answered by another community member, but I'll go ahead and oh. ask you to, just, um, just in case there, you have a, different, a little bit different answer. Um, is any team also using Scalia for Spark-related uh, jobs, was the question. Mm -hmm. I would answer if I know what to say. I think I heard it, this, but uh, I can not possibly okay. answer it. Uh, one thing, let's get one thing clear is that, that uh, from the Wikimedia Foundation perspective, there are two, uh, two uh, not teams, but uh, both Wikimedia Foundation and Wikimedia Deutschland works on the Wikidata, Wikidata query service. Uh, the main, uh, main part of the work is being done uh, in Wikimedia Deutschland, they they handle Wikidata itself and Wikibase, which is a base for Wikidata and also uh, commons, uh, commons, structured data and commons. You can think about database. Uh, 
we uh, handle key data query service and not, even not a complete one because uh, GUI is also uh, handled mostly by Wikidata query service as uh, by Wikimedia Deutsche. Uh, so uh, there are at least two, and of course like the, the heaviest the heaviest user the heavy in terms of traffic are is the community. Uh, we unfortunately not know yet much about the profile of our use cases, but we will be doing uh, investigation to this in the second half of the year. Um, so quite soon. Great. Um, so I'm not seeing many other questions coming in. There's been a little bit of discussion on that stream, so I'd encourage you to go look at the YouTube stream afterwards and um, just have mm -hmm. a look at what folks are saying as well. Um, yeah, so this was just really, really interesting. I'm actually super excited about um, about the Wikimedia Commons query service. That looked really, really cool. So I can't wait to be able to play around with that as well. Yeah, uh, one word of caution though. Uh, like I said, it's a heavy data sellers right now. Um, there will be a communication about this. Uh, there should be communication about this in Today maybe it was postponed. I'm not sure, but uh, for example, we didn't set up yet an in the idle sets, so this will be this can get quite slow. Uh, there are a few missing functionalities. There's not a like a 100% coverage of the functionality that Wikidata Query Service has, uh, but we are definitely working on this, and it's uh, quite quite important in our in our priorities right now. Awesome. It was good to have the, the sneak peek of it. <laughs> um, cool. Well, I don't see anything else coming in. Um, but what I would like to do is for anybody watching uh, this after um, we wrap up, if you do have questions, feel free to um, send them to me or and I, and I can pass them along. Um, and then we'll make sure that those get answered for you. Um, either um, we'll leave them on in the comments on YouTube or we'll um, leave them on the Wikimedia Technical Talks page for you, you to be able to go back and look at them as well. Um, and then we'll also have this list of resources for folks to look at because there's a lot, to, a lot to look through and it's super interesting. So thank you so much for doing this talk today. It was, it was really cool. Um, and also thank you, Brendan, for um, doing the AV. Um, and then again, Anybody who's interested in doing talks or um, interested in technical talks in general, we have a full list of them on our Wikimedia uh, technical talks page. Um, I'd encourage you to go there and take a look. And if you're interested in doing a talk yourself, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, can I answer a quick one question real quick? But oh, there, sure. There's, one, sure, there's sure. a question on the, on the so a uh, question oh. was about uh, if I said the quality is low on uh, because content was missing in the articles. That's not really true. It's the only that. Uh, uh, data only represents notable people, so there will be so judging from this set of people will not be enough to get a larger view of, for example, some of the reasons uh, of the cause of that. And on the other hand, uh, as in any community-driven approach, it's uh, content itself is also uh, kind of a derivative of the people who, who create the content. So, for example, if we have a, a community of uh, fishing specialists, there is a quite quite a good chance that we will be missing some facts about uh, ancient ancient cultures. So uh, it's uh, quite important for any kind of this community of this uh, kind of community driven project to have a good representation of different knowledges, different backgrounds, and so on. So it's not like per se a lack of quality, but rather under representation that we all are maybe not struggling with, but we want to uh, we want to address. That's it. Awesome. No, thank you for thank you for taking that one. Um, yeah, I didn't know if there was a, that that's totally perfect. So thank you so much. Um, awesome. Well, we are at time. Uh, and again, if anybody has uh, has more questions, go ahead and pass them on to us and we'll we'll get back to you. And thank you so much again. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.